Last night, our results from Tanger. You know, I love this one. It's the retail real estate investment trust that owns dozens of outlet centers where you can find some terrific bargains. I've been supporting this one since 2008. You know that? I think it was a solid quarter. The core funds from operations per square. That's the real estate investment trust equivalent of earnings. Came in one cent better than expected. Occupancy rate was a bit soft, but we're going to work on that for a second. The lease termination fees saw a sizable increase year over year. They're, so they're losing a few tenants, but that's not necessarily negative. On the other hand, they saw a 5.2% increase in same-store net income, not net operating income, which was definitively positive. So the stock got hit slightly today, and some people don't know what to make of it. Let's go to work then on it. I think this one does a great job in an environment where price-conscious consumers are shopping. And yes, I'm, of course, enticed by the 4% yield. Let's go straight to the source with Stephen Yalov. He's the president and CEO of Tanger. Learn more about the situation. Mr. Yalof, welcome back to Man Money. Great to be here. I just see one of the things that uh, we don't talk enough about the show because we don't have high frequency traders watching. They want income and they want consistent income. They want dividends that are boosted. They love a 4% yield. You are all of those right now. That's right. You know, we just raised our dividend again. And I think that's important to return to the shareholders, our investors. They can either take those checks and put them away or they can reinvest in our company. And hopefully that's what they're choosing to do. Okay, so now explain to them. Let's be put me in the boardroom where you where you propose that uh, increase in your distribution. What does it sound like? What do you tell the people? Well, again, you know, you have to take a look at future growth and where we're going. And I think we've got a great growth story. You know, we've uh, first of all we've got a fantastic team that we've assembled over the past three or four years. We've come out from COVID uh, like a shotgun. And the company continues to grow. And we think there's even more growth embedded, not only in the organic existing portfolio, but in the new assets that we just purchased and the natural asset that we took out of the ground uh, last quarter. Now, it's important when you discuss the new assets that they haven't been tangerized yet, I'll say, meaning that they may have some custom, some open spaces that you can put uh, new tenants in, or they may have, say, I, I don't want to pick on anybody, but Express just filed for uh, bankruptcy. Maybe they've got something where you can actually do an upgrade. Just because you lose a tenant does not mean that you're necessarily longer term going to do worse. In some cases, you're going to be doing better. Well, I think some of the reaction is to the fact that we've traditionally, at least over the last couple of years, have renewed existing tenants at a rate of about 95%. So when a, a deal comes up for renewal, we get significantly higher rent, and, but we've been willing to renew that tenant. Now what we're saying is there's more upside in replacing a tenant that may be oversized, that maybe hasn't invested in their store, whose sales maybe have started to decline. So it's up to us as stewards of our property, as general merchandise managers of our assets, to go out there and replace certain tenants with higher, better producing tenants. And the upside there is we're not getting rid of that tenant. Right. Maybe we're downsizing them and putting them someplace else in the shopping center. And when they move in the shopping center, you get a new store, a new concept, a right size store, and perhaps you get better productivity out of that asset as well. Okay, so I stay today in New York, so I start thinking, all right, my wife's going to be moving out, out east soon, and that means that when it's raining, she goes to one of your outlets. It, it, are we going to find anything new? Because we do find that there's a novelty element to going to a Tanger outlet. That's right. Well, you know, especially in, in the center in Riverhead, which is one I think you're referring to. Yes, indeed. We have a number of new tenants that we just announced you do. in Riverhead. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting. We just added Bash. And, you know, a, a number of tenants that we're elevating the portfolio of, okay. which is great. We've got some food and beverage retailers that are also going to join us. We are also um, have done a great job of adding furniture. And I think that furniture has been a great driver of traffic. You know, it's wonderful when you build a shopping center and you hear Tiger Woods is putting a pop stroke next door. Right. Or you hear that there's going to be a water park or some great draw that's going to bring tourists in. What we're thinking about doing, how do we create our own draw? So we're using our peripheral lamb. We're using some of that uh, other vacancy to put really exciting tenants in that draw a whole different customer that never came to our centers before. New customer, local customer, we want them to shop with us far more frequently than they do. And when they do, they stay longer. And when they stay longer, they ultimately spend more. Now, money. are there still some high-end stores that have resistance? Because I find the highest, the highest of retail is in one of your outlets these days. You know, I think, I don't think that there's, is there price, if you're asking if there's price resistance for the consumer, I think what makes the shopping experience in outlet center so exciting for the consumer is that customer is aspirational. That's a customer right. that might come in thinking that they can only afford a certain price point, but if they're in that outlet environment, 
all brands become accessible to them because they're on sale every day. So you might have thought that Coach or Kate Spade or Michael Kors was out of reach. But when you walk right. into that store, because the sign outside says everyday pricing, 40% off, all of a sudden it becomes reachable. And you might have aspired to buy into that product your entire life, and now you have the opportunity to do so in our portfolio. And you know what makes it more exciting is that retailers that want to be in our assets, new to, new to outlet retailers, understand that's a great talking point for us as sellers of space to say, listen, you might have an opportunity to get a whole new customer that you don't get anywhere else, who might not want to shop you on Madison Avenue. But here you can, you see a new customer, you can trade them up through your ecosystem, and now, retailer, you can, you can make them a customer of yours for life. All right, well, next question. I had a friend who was watching the show, and uh, he said, okay, look, I get, I get some of the bills, but I mean, Huntsville, really? I mean, no <laughs> one's going to Huntsville for tourism. I said, look, the guy knows more than I do. What do you do when you go to Huntsville? Well, first of all, you go see uh, the Space Pandas play baseball. I mean, Huntsville's Rocket City. It's home of space camp. So there's a tremendous amount of growth in Huntsville. There's permanent population growth. There's a lot of tourism that's going. And there's a lot of, um, we see the office market. It's on fire. In fact, they're growing the office market. What we saw in Huntsville and what we were fortunate to see is tremendous amount of growth and upside and high price points. And we see an opportunity where we can bring higher end retailers. You know, in fact, we just announced today on the earnings call that we signed our first lease in Huntsville. We have only had the project for three, about three months. Uh, we look, uh, Warby Parker is going to be joining us. What a great retailer. They're not in the Tanger ecosystem yet. So their front door to get them in the Tanger e ecosystem was this Huntsville property, which now hopefully we'll have an opportunity to have a conversation with them and take them through our property set. Well, I'm glad my wife is away right now because what she would do is she'd say, all right, I'm going down to Huntsville <laughs> with, with some of my girlfriends. We're going to go buy some property, which I'm tired of because I'm getting too old for that conversation to occur. I want to thank Stephen Yalv, who's the president and CEO of Tanger. 4% yield, great growth. Been with these guys forever. Mad Money's back after the break. When we return, master the markets one stock at a time. The lightning round is up next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.